ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹಿಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದ ಕಮಲಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದಾನ್ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಣೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ್ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ್ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಲಿ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಲವಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ಪಿಷಿಯಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ the prayers of prahlad maharaj are found in the ninth chapter of the seventh canto shrimad bhagavatam as we know shrimad bhagavatam has uh, 12 cantos and there are different devotees in different incarnations described in different cantos but the seventh canto has been exclusively dedicated to prahlad narsingh dev the appearance of prahlad maharaj devotion through the appearance of narsingh dev So Prahlad Maharaj has always been a Mahabhagavad Vaishnav, but the world recognized it with the appearance of Narsingha Dev. So Narsingha Chaturdashi is not just the appearance of Narsingha Dev, it's also the appearance of Prahlad Maharaj's devotion, because devotion always existed, but it manifested in the presence of the Vaishnav community on that day. And it also marks the disappearance day of Hiranyaka Shivu, unfortunately, <laughs> with the appearance of Narsingha Dev. So we will speak something about uh, the mood of Prahlad Maharaj's prayers. And um, today's discussion will not be one verse that we will try to take. I will try to do a whole chapter overview with all the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj in the time that we have. Of course, it's almost impossible to do that because we have over 50 prayers of Prahlad Maharaj in that chapter. So this will be a brief and... Um, very quick breeze i would say breezing overview of the different prayers of prahlad maharaj again i won't be quoting all of them and discussing all of them in great depth we will try to take the essence of what prahlad maharaj is trying to say and move on throughout in our discussion so my request to all the vaishnavas and vaishnavis is uh, to keep the seventh canto chapter 9 in front of you where the prayers of prahlad maharaj are discussed and if possible you can have a notebook next to you or if you have a pencil you can you can try to take notes on the bhagavatam but typically if you have a notebook you can try writing some points uh, which uh, whichever you think you could resonate with and something that you would like to take notes not take notes of what i'm saying but taking notes of the mood of prahlad maharaj's prayers which is more important now someone could say what is the what is the importance of all this like what is the point what is the gain right today we are celebrating ekadashi here i'm not sure about new zealand um but you you're celebrating ekadashi too nice so we are we are also celebrating ekadashi here and typically devotees when they celebrate ekadashi they first want to go to the ekadashi book and read the story of the ekadashi but there's an interesting way how they read the story they read it backwards because the benefit of following the ekadashi is at the end of the story so you first read the end not that you should i'm saying that's typically what devotees do they read the end and what am i first going to gain, gain and get out of this fast and then we try to think how we do the fast right so this is um, sakama bhakti where we perform bhakti with uh, ourselves being the center of the focus to see what we are gaining so what do we gain by reading these prayers of shrimad bhagavatam we see that prayers are a constant um invisible thread in the whole shrimad bhagavatam we have prayers of kunti we have prayers of bhishma dev in the first canto right we have the chatur shloki in the second canto we have the garbha stuti in the third canto canto 3 chapter 31 uh, it's a it's a very 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 important section 
in fact his holiness mahavishnu goswami maharaj of gujarat um who went back home back to god in 2010 and left all of us bereft of his physical association he would lay so much stress on that chapter canto 3 chapter 31 and he would say one should try to read that chapter because that's the song of the unborn child in the womb calling out to krishna for protection right and many more prayers but i'm just mentioning a few in the fourth canto we see the prayers of dhruva it's interesting um that's also chapter 9 by the way canto 4 chapter 9 then in the fifth canto we can see prayers that maharaj rahugana offers to jada bharat where one important prayer that he offers is that oh um jada bharat you are actually a great soul a mahabhagavat uh, you know completely self realized soul but because you are walking on the planet in a disguised form in a form that can be recognized i as a foolish king i thought you to be just another tribal person and i offended you so my prayer is to all the pure vaishnavas on the planet who are walking in disguise sometimes as a child and sometimes as a woman and sometimes as a senior citizen and sometimes in a shudra family and sometimes as a brahmana i offer my obeisances to all of you who are pure vaishnavas walking in disguise then in the 6th canto we see the the hamsa guhya prayers we find so many other prayers also my personal favorite are the four verses of chitra um, of vritrasura canto 6 chapter 11 text 24 25 26 and 27 i often times even call them as the chatur shloki of the sixth canto uh, because i heard it like that from a senior vaishnav so i really liked it four verses of the sixth canto and they are prayers offered by vritrasura on his departing bed not literally on the bed it was a battlefield but while he was departing being um attacked by indra he offered those four prayers there are many more i'm just naming a few as a stand out in the seventh canto we find the prayers of prahlad maharaj whole chapter chapter 9 of canto 7 uh, deals with the prayers of prahlad my request to each one of us here is if we can offer those prayers uh, on a daily basis to narsingha dev that's wonderful but at least to narsingha chaturdashi following the footsteps of prahlad maharaj we can offer those prayers in the 8th canto we see uh, chapter 3 text 2 to 29 we have the prayers of gajendra the the prayers of gajendra the elephant who was injured and attacked suddenly by the the catch of the jaws of the crocodile right our situation again shrimad bhagavatam gives so many different stories mapping our situation allegorically and metaphorically and even practically we as the elephant are uh, puffed up with our strength and our celestial abilities and with our family that gajendra had and then as we get into the pond of this world only to drink the sweet waters of joy suddenly there are crocodile bites of distress and we try our best fighting 10000 years on our now again 10000 years that gajendra fought or 1000 years depending on the number uh, it it is symbolic to the point that we fight our best to get free from the problems of the jaw uh, of the the bite the jaw bite of the crocodile of problems but ultimately when nothing works and we get weaker and the crocodile gets stronger because naturally the crocodile represents maya here and the pond represents the material world which is home ground advantage for the crocodile called maya because this is her queendom <laughs> this material world is the not the kingdom but the queendom of the queen called maya devi or this is the pond of the crocodile so the crocodile is getting stronger and stronger with home ground advantage and we as gajendra it's foreign land for us so we are getting weaker we have no way out apart from offering prayers and if we sincerely do that even if we are not devotees even if we consider ourselves to be animalistic like gajendra the supreme lord will come there to help us free us from the jaw bite of material nature mamevai prapadyante mayam etam tarantite as krishna promises in the gita this is the eighth um, canto similarly we find in the ninth canto in the tenth canto in the tenth canto we can find right from the second chapter the prayers offered by the demigods to the womb of devaki while krishna is there very beautiful and famous prayers are there uh, going ahead we find prayers of mani grieve nalakuver in the tenth chapter of the tenth canto uh, prayers of brahmaji in the 14th chapter of the 10th canto 
prayers of the Nagapatnis, the wives of Kaliya in the 16th chapter of the 10th canto, uh, prayers by the friends of Krishna who are burning in the forest fire, begging for protection in the 19th chapter of the 10th canto, prayers by the gopis, chapter 21, um, chapter 21, 29, 31, 35, 39, 47, all different chapters that the gopis are offering prayers. Um, so, so many prayers. And then finally in chapter 87, we can find the prayers offered by the Vedas personified. Similarly, in the 11th canto, we have prayers. And finally in the 12th as well. As uh, Not to forget Rudra Geet in the 4th canto and Bhumi Geet and Ayla Geet and and, and then the, the prayers of the Avadut, Avanti Brahmana in the 11th and then the 12th canto. So I'm just quoting these uh, references as just to hint to the direction that prayers are constantly found in the Srimad Bhagavatam as a common theme. Because without offering prayers, we are not getting out of this material world. Till the time we don't offer them through the lips and feel it through the heart, we continue to remain here. Somebody was asking, but what if we don't have that level of really meaning these prayers? Will it still work? The answer is yes. It will still work. Because these verses, Srila Prabhupada writes, the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam are extensions and expansions of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So Hare Krishna Mahamantra, even if we don't mean it, even if we don't feel it, even if we don't have that prayerful mood, at least we have a proper posture and sitting and the pronunciation and we get benefit. So similarly, with the prayers of the Bhagavatam, there are three benefits. One, because it's in Sanskrit spoken by pure Vaishnavas, it is spotless. It is spotless. So by chanting that, we get purified. Second, what happens is Krishna is pleased because we remind Krishna of that pure devotee who chanted it. Like by chanting the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, we are reminding Nashingadev, not that he needs a reminder from us, but he still, we become the instrument of bringing joy to the Lord by reminding him of Prahlad Maharaj. So one, the prayers are, um, are flawless. What we offer is temporary. What we offer is temporary. Sukha Sampati Gharave Kashtamite Tanaka Om Jai Jagadi Shahare is what we offer. Like may all the calamities in my life be taken and may I be happy. <laughs> Krishna is laughing at that prayer. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll give you freedom from all this you know, place of suffering. But Prahlad Maharaj, when he's offering prayers, it's not temporary praying, it's eternal prayers. Prayers out of love. That's point number one. And that causes cleansing of the consciousness. Point number two, Krishna is pleased because he's reminded of a pure Vaishnava. Point number three, what happens is with these verses, our faith gets stronger. That there is no joy in this world. And Krishna is our only shelter. And when we speak these prayers, it adds authority to our speaking and, and, and our um, preaching. So people get um, really amazed by the prayers of the pure Vaishnavas. So it's good to memorize these prayers. And because Prarthana or Vandanam is one of the limbs of Bhakti, one devotee was saying, out of the nine limbs of Bhakti, one limb that we definitely can perform is offering prayers. Right? To hear about Krishna, we go off to sleep. To chant about Krishna, well, I don't know to sing. And Japa, I don't feel like. Smaranam, oh, very difficult to spontaneously remember Krishna. Pada Sevanam, I kind of do it, but I'm distracted. Archanam, uh, you know, when the temple invites me on the altar, then I can. And at home, <laughs> it's pretty messed up, <laughs> the devotee was saying. Then what to speak of Sakyam and, you know, Dasyam, Sakyam and Atma Nivedanam. They seem to be pretty hypothetical at this point. How do I befriend the Lord and how do I surrender everything? But there's one limb, which is called Vandanam just to offer prayers, which I definitely can, even in my conditioned state. Because I'm in the conditioned state, I can. If I'm in a liberated state, what do I pray for? But because I am fallen, I can pray for upliftment in the consciousness. So that being the introduction, let's begin. This is a very, very beautiful section. Um, devotees uh, get profuse um, um, inspiration through this section. This is uh, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Pralat Stuti where the Supreme Lord pacifies Nashingadev with his uh, beautiful, wonderful prayers. So the um, background to this chapter is such that Nashingadev has made his appearance in the, in the royal courtroom of Hiranyakashipu. And of course, Hiranyakashipu was very confident that the Lord doesn't 
exist in any of those pillars. The reason he asked for pillars is because Hiranyakashipu had handmade those pillars himself. You see, when people can uh, custom make their homes here in this world, what to speak of Hiranyakashipu? He had different demigods do different aspects of designing his home. But the pillars of his main assembly were put together by himself. He himself did it. So there was no way anybody could be hiding in that pillar because he himself put the pillars and the, the columns and he knew there was nobody inside. That's how Hiranyakashipu with confidence asked Prahlad Maharaj. He could have asked for any aspect of the assembly hall, but he looked for these columns, these pillars, because he was confident. There's nobody, absolutely nobody there. But nonetheless, Krishna appeared there um, and did the needful. After destroying Hiranyakashipu, Nishingadev was um, still fuming and he destroyed other thousands and thousands of other soldiers and he was still fuming, spitting fire through his eyes and licking the blood of Hiranyakashipu, which was all over his face by the surgery that his nails had performed. Blood was dripping down his mane and like a um, tongue, like a razor, Nashingadev was displaying that and licking the blood of Hiranyakashipu from his mane and from his face. And he wanted, he wanted to take more demons on for the kill. But the demigods at that point looked and they were horrified. There was no incarnation where the demigods themselves were scared. Generally, demigods are the ones who invite the Lord. And when the Lord comes, he comes for the demigods. Indrari vyakulam lokam mridayanti yuge yuge. The Lord comes for the demons who are the enemies of Indra. But this is, this is a very interesting incarnation where even the demigods were scared. Even Lakshmi finds it Mahad Adbhutam. She doesn't um, um, approach the Supreme Lord. And it's quite interesting. There's a whole planet called Lakshmi Narsingha Loka where Lakshmi Devi resides with Nashingadev. So it's not that she had not seen the form before. She sees the form every moment. For Lakshmi Devi to say that I have never seen this form before, it's not true. She sees the form every minute because it's not a form that he took. It was an eternally manifest form that Lakshmi Devi had seen even before the demigods. But it's so amazing that the quality of Narsingadev or the rasa that he came to taste, apart from other rasas, is Adbhuta rasa, astonishment. He was astonishingly, astonishingly, astonishingly horrifying. <laughs> So much so that although Lakshmi Devi sees that form of the Lord every minute, eternally, she was horrified in astonishment that I have never seen this form before. She was almost thinking, yes, I've seen something similar in my dream, but not this one. Because every moment, the Supreme Lord's form changes. And it's so interesting that the demigods could not go and pacify the Lord, just like Yudhishthir Maharaj's lamentation. In the, in the Mahabharat, Yudhishthir Maharaj was lamenting and Krishna tried his bit to pacify him, but he could not. But finally, who could? Bhishma Dev could. Uh, it's because the Supreme Lord wanted, Krishna wanted to give that credit to Bhishma Dev, the credit of pacifying Yudhishthir Maharaj. So similarly, um, although the demigods could have technically approached Nashinga Dev and pacified him, Nashinga Dev wanted that glory to be given to Prahlad Maharaj. So let's begin. This chapter starts very beautifully. If you have your uh, books and your notebooks, it will really um, put our discussion together very beautifully. Swapada mole patitam tamar bhakam vilokya deva kripaya pariplata uttapyatat shirshnyatat karam bhujam kala hi vistrastadhyam kritabhayam. Swapada mole patitam tamar bhakam. Pralad Maharaj climbs up the stairs, again inspired by Brahmaji, to pacify Nashingadev. And Swapada Mule Patitam, seeing that this little Arbhakam, this little child Prahlad, has fallen on the feet, lotus feet. Nashingadev, Vilokya Devaha, Deva, the Supreme Lord, after seeing that, that this little child has fallen at my feet, Kripaya Paripplutaha, he was overjoyed with compassion. Uttapya, he made Prahlad Maharaj get up and Tad Shirshna Adhat Karam Bhuja, he touched 
the head of Prahlad Maharaj with his lotus palm. Very interesting. Tava kara kamala vare nakham adbhuta shringam. On the palms of the Supreme Lord or in, through the palms of the Supreme Lord, he gives the power of protection and empowerment. And through the tip of his nails, he destroys. So paritranaya sadhunam is done through the palm for Prahlad Maharaj. And vinashaya chatushkritam is done through the, the tips of the nails of that same lotus head. So kala hi bistrasta dhyam krita bhayam. Krita abhayam. He placed that hand the palm on the head of Prahlad Maharaj, that which gives fearlessness. Very interesting. So this shows the power of empowerment. When a Vaishnav tolerates, what were the qualities of Prahlad Maharaj? He always walked on the path of devotion. He always preached the glories of the Lord. Even when he was tested and brainwashed by the demons by wrong association, he didn't move an inch and he tolerated everything never complained, never blamed, never criticized, never even doubted the presence of the Supreme Lord and never spoke anything against Hiranyakashipu. If somebody has these qualities and is steadfast with sense control, then the Supreme Lord will give him all protection and empower him. And how does he do that? He touches the head of such a devotee. We can see in Dhruva Maharaj's life, same thing. Words are not coming. Yonta pravishya mama vacha mimam prasuptam sanjiva yatya kila shakti dharaswa dhamna anyamsta hasta charana shravana twagadin prana namo bhagavate purushaya tubhyam. This five year old child is faltering. He doesn't know what to speak in the middle of the forest when the Supreme Lord appears. And with his conch shell, he touches Dhruva Maharaj. And Dhruva Maharaj starts offering such beautiful prayers. Prahlad Maharaj, same situation. He's falling at the feet of Nashinga Dev with tears of ecstasy, not knowing what to say. Not knowing what to say. He doesn't know these prayers. These prayers were never memorized by him. Now we have Srimad Bhagavatam. We have classes on them. Um, maybe somebody's recorded them online. And then we can just hear and memorize these verses. But it was not the case for Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj did not have anybody teach him Prahlad Stuti. Right? He spontaneously chanted. Although he had no clue of Vyakarana grammar and logic and reasoning, he had not learnt all those at the age of five. But Chaitanya Charitamra describes, Yesya prasadat adnyopi sadhyo sarvajnyatam vrajet sa shri Chaitanya devo me bhagavan samprasidatu. Even somebody who has no knowledge becomes sadhyo sarvajnyatam prajet. is becomes empowered with all transcendental knowledge and ability just by the touch of the Supreme Lord. Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langhayate girim yat kripata mahamande shri gurum dinatarana. Just by the touch. In fact, in the Padyavali Rupa Goswami says that ambodhi sthalatam sthalam jaladitam dhuli lavashailatam. Shaila Mritkanatam Truna Kulishatam Vajatrunakshinatam Vahni Shitalatam Himam Dahanatam Ayati Yasya Chaya Lila Durlalita Dhuta Vyasanine Krishna Yatubhyam Namaha. Oh Krishna, I bow down to you. By your empowerment, by your Shakti, what can you do? You can make land into water and water into land. You can make dust into mountain and mountain into dust. You can take a grass and make it into a thunderbolt and you can make a thunderbolt into blade of grass. You can make fire as cold as ice and you can make ice as hot as fire. My Lord, you can do anything that you want. That's your ability. Now in that, let me sprinkle a little bit of mischief that you have in Krishna Leela. Oh, what else can I say? Your ability is such that you can transform. On that, if I do the, the garnishing of mischief and naughty behavior in childhood pastimes of Krishna, what more can you do and what is impossible for you? Right? So you see Prabhupada, 70 years old, getting into a cargo ship, 37 days over <laughs> over the ocean with heart attacks. One devotee, I asked him, he was 72 years old. I asked him, how does the body feel at 72? He said, oh, body's sore. My back is hurting. My knees are hurting. Um, and my digestion is messed up. And I was telling him, Prabhupada was 72. I mean, not, I was com- not that I was comparing and putting him down in front of Prabhupada, but both of us were discussing. And I said, how amazing. 
that you're saying all this and Prabhupada would have felt all this. And then it was 1968 when he was 72 years old, which means another decade to go after that. <laughs> How is it possible? Krishna Shakti Vina Nahitara Pravartan. Kali Yuga Dharma Aranam Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Vina Nahitara Pravartan. Without the touch of the palm of the Supreme Lord, it is not possible. It is not possible. And how do we get touched by the Lord's empowerment? Oh, by following the instructions of the spiritual master, by chanting the holy name, by serving the Vaishnavas and following the regulative principles. That is what uh, brings in the mercy of the Supreme Lord. As soon as Nushingadev touches his palm, Prahlad Maharaj feels as if all his material desires have vanished. <laughs> Dhuta Akhila Ashubha. As if he had something material. But his heart was jumping and erupting in ecstatic joy as the Lord touches him. You can see it's so interesting. The touch of the Supreme Lord is so rare. Bali Maharaj gets touched by the Supreme Lord's feet once and he's eternally remembered. Ganga Devi washes the feet of the Lord once and she's eternally purifying. This is the power of the touch of the Lord. And imagine the fortune of Kaliya. Kasyanu bhavo syana deva vitmahe tavangri renu husparashadikara. The Nagapatni say, what has our mischievous, envious husband done in his past lives? That you climb on his head on each of his hoods and you're imprinting and stamping the signs and symbols of your lotus feet by force. He's not even asking for it. What has he done? <laughs> the power. You can see when Ramachandra touched his lotus feet on stone, the stone melted and Ahalya manifested. This is the power of the Lord's touch, whether through his hand, whether to his feet. And what to speak of when he glances at the material nature. Sir Aikshata, the Taitari Upanishad describes when he touches this wall through his glance, creation begins. <laughs> creation begins. And when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glances, what happens? When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glances, Kaivalyam Narakayate, Tridhashapura, Akasha Pushpayate, Durdantendriya Sarupakala Patali, Prokhata Damstrayate, Vishwam Purna Sukhayate, Vidi Mahendra Adishakitayate, Yad Karunya Kataksha Vaibhava Vatam, Tam Gaurame Vastuva. Sri Patrabodhananda Saraswati has said, when Mahaprabhu glances, pure bhakti is given. Emana Dayala Prabhu Nahi Tribhuvane. Krishna Prema Hoy Jara Dura Darishani. Just by seeing the Supreme Lord, not the Lord seeing us, but by we seeing the Lord from a distance, Krishna Prema is given. Kaviraj Goswami says such an incarnation has never been seen by any inca- any yuga. What to speak of Kali Yuga? This is when we glance at Mahaprabhu. When Mahaprabhu glances at us, what more can be said? So this is the power of the Lord's touch, whether through his glance or hands or lotus feet. So it is described as soon as Prahlad Maharaj was touched, the form that he was seeing in front of him manifested in his heart. And his body was trembling in ecstasy. Heart was melting. and The cloud of his heart melted and came as tears through his eyes. <laughs> His personality was like an ocean of compassion. And wherever there is ocean, we know it's very interesting, dear devotees. It's very interesting. Prahlad Maharaj is like an ocean of compassion. The sun of bhakti is rising in his heart. And we know whenever the sun and the ocean come together, clouds must be formed by the water cycle. So the ocean of compassion called Prahlad evaporated by the sun of bhakti to cause the heart which is in the form of a cloud filled with the pure water of ecstasy. When that cloud melted, tears of love came from his eyes in the form of a rain shower. <laughs> and the cycle was complete. <laughs> so this has been described. And in this mood, Astaushid Harim Ekagra Manasa Susamahita Prema Gadgadaya Vacha Tanyasta Ridayekshana. 
Shukdev Goswami and ultimately Narad Muni described that with full attention, with mind completely absorbed, voice faltering and heart and eyes fixed on the Lord, he started to offer prayers in humility. So these are the four things needed when we chant Japa. Full attention. We are not doing anything else. We are not speaking anything else. We are not looking anywhere else. Point number one. Point number two. Hmm. It must be for Hari, nobody else. We are chanting, but this must be selflessly for his pleasure, not asking anything. The only thing we can ask for is cleansing of our heart so that our quality of service betters. The third thing is our eyes and our heart must be in place. And the fourth is we must beg in humility that my Lord, I have no other way apart from begging you. In this mood, Prahlad Maharaj starts offering his prayers. Prahlad Maharaj says, Brahmadaya Suragana Munayota Siddha. All the great personalities headed by the demigods. Sattvai Katana, they are filled in Sattva Gun. He's making a contrast here. He said, Demigods, I am a demon. Sattva gun, I am in Tamogun. And Vachasam Pravahaihi, they have rivers of words. I am faltering because I don't know anything. And still they are na araditum. Still they are not able to pacify you, my Lord. What can I, Ugrajate, born in a demoniac family, what can I do? How I don't know words. I am not in Sattva gun. I am not a demigod. What can I offer? But then he also says, anyway, these things are not needed. He says, Dhana, wealth, Abhijana, influence and people around us, Rupa, beautiful form, Tapa, austerity, Shruta, learning, Ojas, sensory expertise, Tejas, influence and effulgence, Prabhava, Control over others, bala, physical strength, paurusha, ability, buddhi, intelligence, yoga, mystic potency, and other hidden abilities. With all of this individually and collective, collectively put together, na aradhanaya, you are not pleased. You're not impressed. You're not attracted. But the only thing that attracts your heart, my Lord, bhaktya tutosha, you're attracted by devotion. And he gives the example, gaja yuthapaya. Like the king of elephants, Gajendra. So imagine how great Gajendra is. <laughs> that Prahlad Maharaj quotes Gajendra as an example of devotion in the presence of Ugna Shingadev. Now what we speak in front of the deity must better be true. We know the story of uh, Shakshi Go- Sakshi Gopal, where the Lord is hearing every single word. And then especially if he's Narshingadev deity, really be careful in what we are speaking. And what if he's actually Narshingadev, not in a deity manifestation, he's just broken the pillar in your house and manifested. We really have to be careful. And it's not even Lakshmi Narshinga, you know, giving blessings. It is Ugra Narshinga, blood dripping from his teeth. He's just murdered the father. How careful should the son be? And in the presence of the demigods, the whole creation is watching. Every single word that Prahlad Maharaj is speaking is worth Millions and millions of lifetimes of realization. So what he's speaking is true. And there he's quoting Gajendra. Can we imagine the greatness of Gajendra's devotion that Prahlad Maharaj is quoting him? He's saying, you were impressed by Gajendra. Not because he had any other ability, but because he had devotion. And how great is devotion? How great is devotion? It doesn't matter what family we are born in. Prahlad Maharaj is trying to pacify himself that it doesn't matter even if I am a demon. Vipradvishad guna yutha taravinda nabha pada ravinda vimukha shvapacham varishtam manye tadarvita mano vajane hitartha pranam punati sakulam natubhuri manaha. He says somebody could be a Brahmana or somebody could be a demigod with 12 transcendental qualities. You know, they could be very knowledgeable. Um, They could be very truthful. They could have sense control, mind control. They would be scholars. They would be very detached. They are very um, 
shy and humble, very tolerant, non-envious, sacrificing quality for the benefit of others. They can give in charity, a lot of determination and fortitude and very peaceful in their mind. They have all these qualities. But if they don't have devotion to your lotus feet, then what is the point, my Lord? With all these qualities, they can purify themselves, but a devotee can purify his whole family. Why is he saying that? Because we can see the wives of Kaliya offered uh, bhakti. They offered their heart. But who got the mercy? Kaliya got it. The whole family gets it. Uh, Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya performed bhakti. It was Amogha who got mercy before Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya completely realized mercy in his life. Similarly, Prahlad Maharaj is saying, I have been performing bhakti, but you come for whom? For Hiranyakashipu. This is a proof that bhakti gives benefit, not just to the living entity, but even to the family. Hmm? So therefore, I am my Lord. Um, with whatever little devotion I have, I'm not disqualified. I can offer prayers. Although I'm Ugrajate, although I'm born in a demoniac family. So it's almost like Narsingadev is saying in the heart, to Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj, you are offering these prayers, but for whose benefit? Hmm. Um, I, I would like to make a request. There's, I think, some microphone which is on. So if um, there's an option, we can. That'll really uh, help. So Narsingadev was asking, so these prayers that you're offering is for whose benefit? You think I'm going to get benefited by this? Hmm? Not that he's literally asking, but the flow in which those prayers are offered. So Prahlad Maharaj says, no, this is not for your benefit. You are always satisfied. And manam janat avidusha karuno vrinite. You are ready to accept my prayers out of your kindness. Hmm? Out of your kindness. When a child offers let's say 10 paisa or 1 rupee or 1 dollar to the father from his piggy bank. The father keeps it. Not that he needs it. He, he has like, let's say a million dollars. But when the child gives a few cents or let's say 1 dollar, it's filled with devotion. It's filled with affection. It's not the number of zeros that matter. It's the one in front, the child's willingness to offer. One child had offered me, broken her piggy bank and offered me 13 dollars, one three. And said, if you ever build a temple for Bhananandani, your deities, please, please use this money. I have kept it. <laughs> so somebody could say, what is $13 after all? But, you know, it is these $13 are my life because that child had only $13 that she had collected in her piggy bank and she broke it to give it to me. <laughs> she said, she could have said, get me something with this. She said, no, when you build a temple for Bhananandani, you please use this, my, my presiding deity. Uh, you can please kindly use. So I said, sure, I will always keep this money with me. So I'm just, not that I'm Nishingadeva and the child is Prahlad Maharaj, but I'm just giving an example that if our uh, steel-framed heart, stone-like heart can think like that, what to speak of the merciful nature of the Lord's heart? Prahlad Maharaj is saying, Yadya Jano Bhagavate Vidadhita Manam. Whatever prayers are offered to you, they are like that money. You don't need it, but you accept it for our benefit. What is our benefit? Tachatmane Prati Mukhase Yatha Mukhashri. Prahlad Maharaj gives the example just like when the face is decorated, the reflection is automatically decorated. So when you are pleased, you accept the makeup of our prayers in your heart and you become happy. Naturally, the reflection that is all of us, your parts and parcels, we become happy. So you accept it not for your benefit, but for our benefit. Therefore, my Lord, Tasma, therefore, Aham Vikata Viklava Ishwarasya. I am going to give up the thoughts of whether I'm qualified or disqualified. And Sarvatmana, with all my heart, Mahigranami Yatha Manisham, I will glorify you, my Lord, as much Manisham, as little as I have in my mind. This is very important. Srila Prabhupada would many times quote the baby Saraswati example, right? You know two sentences, you preach two sentences. It's not that we 
uh, wait to become scholars and we learn the four Vedas and we know 100,000 verses and only then we will start speaking about Krishna. No. Here you see Prahlad Maharaj uses the word Yatha Manisham. Whatever little intelligence I have, whatever empowerment I have, I will speak accordingly. You can find even in the third canto, the, um, the example it comes even in the first canto, it comes Yatha Mati Yatha Shrutam. Whatever, how much ever intelligence you have given me, my Lord, whatever I have heard and whatever little I remember, I will just speak on that basis. It's not that I am a scholar or a pundit or I have done some research or any of that, but whatever little baby, babyish talking ability I have, I will just speak about you. When the child says, daddy, or say, mama, the parents are smiling. Not the child has to wait to technically grow up and understand what is mama and what is daddy and uh, what is the psychology of a father. and Nothing. You don't need all that. You just have to put your heart and say, daddy, <laughs> that's all. And the father picks up the child. So similarly with our heart, with our devotion, whatever little we can collect in our heart, we offer it to Krishna. So this term, my Guru Maharaj explains in this context that this term Yatha Manisham is very important as, as a preacher or as the members of Srila Prabhupada's movement. We should all speak about Krishna for our purification and as far as our intelligence allows, whatever, we, whatever empowerment we have. Why? What is the benefit? Prahlad Maharaj says, Nicho Jaya Guna Visargam Anupravishtaha Puyeta Yena Hipuman by repeated glorification of Krishna, Rajogun, Tamogun, and Sattvagun, influences on the living entity is destroyed. We will fall into Tamogun and Rajogun only if we don't speak enough about Krishna. But we should continuously keep speaking something or the other, something that we have read, something that we have heard, maybe a drama that we saw, something about Krishna, something about the Vaishnavas, we should constantly speak. His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj says, silence is golden. This doesn't mean that we keep quiet. It means true silence means only to speak of the golden avatar. This is silence is golden. <laughs> Just speak of Mahaprabhu, the golden avatar, constantly. Satatam kirtayantum. You can see how many times Krishna uses this word. Satatam, constantly. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Kirtaniya Sada Hari. Shunvanti Gayanti Grananti Abhikshnashaha Abhikshnashaha also means constantly Sada means constantly Satatam means constantly Nityam means constantly So as much as possible we must be absorbed And with this as the introduction Prahlad Maharaj begins He says my lord Tad yacha manyu masurascha hatastvayadhyā My lord please give up your manyum Please give up your anger what kind of incarnation is this? He's chastising the Shingadev. <laughs> Devotees are simple, simple hearted. Saraltahi Vaishnavta. Devotees, Vaishnavas, demigods, all these pure Vaishnavas are they're simple hearted. They will get scared with your anger like this. Please give up. Please give up this anger. Shingadev is saying, but I am angry because of Hiranyakashipu. What all he did to you? To so that, Prahlad Maharaj says, Mode ta sadhu rapi prushtika sarpa hatya. Even sadhus are happy when snakes and scorpions are killed. Now Hiranyakashipu is gone, dead and gone. When sadhus can sink like that, why can't the Supreme Lord sink? In fact, lokashta nirvriti mitha pratiyanti sarve. The whole world is happy that Hiranyakashipu is dead. Why are you not happy? Why don't you just get pacified? Rupam nrasimha vibhayaya janasmaranti. Do you want the whole world to remember you like this? Filled with um, anger and blood and all of that. Just be pacified and give everybody blessings, Baba. What are you doing? What kind of form is this? <laughs> and then he challenges Narsingadev. Don't think that I am afraid. He starts the verse by saying, Naham bhibemi. Very... Affirmatively, na aham bibemi. Though in Sanskrit the word bibemi means to be afraid. And aham bibemi, I am afraid. Na aham bibemi, I am never afraid. <laughs> you know, in Sanskrit you can rearrange bibemiaham, you know, something like that, that. And then you can put the na at the end. Again, it means that I am not afraid. 
but by starting the verse with a na naham bibemi it's very affirmatively emphatic that i am not afraid you know you can scare the whole world with your makeup but i am not afraid <laughs> the dog will always recognize its master whether in night robes or in professional wear just by anga saurabhya by the the fragrance not in our case but the supreme lord by the fragrance of the master and the 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 quality of the master any dress you come in my lord i will recognize you not that i am comparing pralad maharaj to a faithful dog but the point is uh, our bhakti vinod thakur he says my lord let me be your faithful dog tumi to thakur tumaro kukur my lord you're my master and i am your dog like servant so same mood here naham bibemya jitate tibhayanakasya jibhar ka netra bhrukuti rabaso gradam strat सन your eyebrows are moving and dancing in anger and rabhasa ugradam strad look at those sharp teeth every teeth is a canine teeth <laughs> and you're not vanamali you're not having vaijayanti mala antrasraja you're wearing a garland of intestines which has never been done in any incarnation and khataja keshara the mane and hair are dripping blood and shankhu karanat look at your ears pointing upwards in nirhada you're roaring and nakagra look at your nails how sharp they are my father hiranyakashipu could not be killed by the thunderbolt of indra on his chest the thunderbolt of indra which troubled the whole brindavan and the brijbasis for 7 days didn't cause any didn't cause any harm to the chest of hiranyakashipu but that chest was ripped by the tip of your nails that's how strong you are but my lord i i i really want to tell you i'm not afraid <laughs> why are you not afraid why are you not afraid hmm? so it's prabhupad gives an example uh, in one of his small books that this is the power of taking shelter of the lord big big elephants get swept in the river but the fishes are swimming without any fear in that same river current why because they are completely surrendered submerged in that water so hiranyakashipu was like the big elephant narsingadev was like the river current and by the river current force of narsingadev's um, appearance the elephant called hiran uh, hiranyakashipu swept away but the little fish called pralad maharaj is swimming in ecstasy because he sheltered in that water this is the power prabhupad explains in another place that the wild animals are scared of the the lion but the lion cubs they climb on the head <laughs> you can see lion king not that you you should see but i'm just giving <laughs> just giving a materialistic disney Yeah. Walt Disney equivalence hmm? <laughs> why was all that a hit because it represents the relationship between a father and a child in the lion kingdom where is the source of that aham bija pradapita that's the ninth chapter of the seventh canto of shrimad bhagavatam where the supreme lion father the lion king narsingadev appeared with his lion cub Pralad Maharaj in front of the whole world in his pride land the land of Hiranyakashipu's pride <laughs> very interesting you see in sanskrit the word stamba means pillar but the word stamba also means pride so why did the supreme lord break the pillar and not break anything else because it's a play of word the word pillar in sanskrit means stamba but stamba also means pride so we could technically say narsingadev broke the stamba of hiranyakashipu as he appeared he broke the pillar slash broke the pride of the demon as he appeared so the whole world saw this so when pralad maharaj is speaking like this he said i am not afraid 
So Narsingha Dev is asking him, then what are you afraid of? Is there anything that you're afraid of? Prahlad Maharaj says, yes, I have a, I have a fear in my heart. What is that? Says, my Lord, what I'm really afraid of is not getting shelter at your lotus feet. Look at the humility of Prahlad Maharaj for whom the Supreme Lord came. We are having so many Kirtan Melas and so many Kirtans, thousand, two thousand, five thousand devotees singing together. And we don't see a crack in any pillar. All of us are calling out, but there's not even a crack. But a five-year-old child is just casually offering prayers and devotion. Like every day. Not a crack, but the whole pillar cracks. And the Lord, the, the source of all sources, the supreme manifestation of mercy appears in a form just for this one child, one devotee, five-year-old child. What level of devotion is that? And then he says, what I'm scared of is you may reject me. You may forget me. You may not give me shelter at your lotus feet. And I am stuck in this material world. And my reactions are coming. Samsara chakra kadanat grasatam pranita, my Lord. I am stuck with these swakarma bihi. By my past life reactions, I'm stuck with suffering here. And I'm bound by demon, demoniac association. O Mukunda, O Krishna. Apavarga sharanam vayese gadanu. When will I get shelter at your lotus feet? So Nashingadev says, shelter? Why do you want shelter? Just enjoy your father's property. You know, I've killed your father and I have made you the king. You have so much shelter. You have your army. You have the money of your father. You have your position. You have all the demigods seeing you in the highest position of honor and dignity. So just be here as a, as a king and enjoy all the material opulence. That's your security, right? People talk about investment plans and how to double their money and their savings. And they say, you invest a thousand dollars a month from the age of so-and-so to the age of 55. And then after that, For the next 35 years, 40 years, you and your wife and your children and everyone, you get $3,000 a month. I'm just making up numbers, you know. You get $3,000 a month for till the time you, you know, you're alive or you're 120 years or whatever. (laughs) And we feel security. And the person will say, the agent will say that when we get old, when our children and our grandchildren and our family forget us, When we have money on our side, we have some safety. We have some safety net to fall on. So Nashingadeva was telling Prahlad Maharaj here, why are you thinking of my shelter and things like that? Just enjoy your father's property. To which Prahlad Maharaj says, Yasmat priya priya viyoga sayoga janma shoka gnina sakala yoni shudahyamana dukkhaushadam tadapi dukkha matadhyaham bhuman brahmami vadamme tavadasya yogam. My Lord, very good proposal. I could be with my, in my father's, on my father's throne and be the king and enjoy all the property. Very good plan. Very nice. Thank you for this suggestion. But I have a point to make. I have a point to make. Today it is there. Tomorrow it may not be there because it's material. If I depend on anything material, it's possible the army may turn against me. The demigods may turn against me. My position, I could be kicked out of position. I may lose my money. Um, you know, we've seen the life of Sri Ram Chandra. He personally exemplified one day before coronation. Everything is perfect. Perfect planning. Everything taken away because it's material. So Prahlad Maharaj is saying all of these things will be taken away. And definitely, if not that life at death, it will be taken away. What about next life then? Again, I'm in the same boat. And now next life, I'm in the same boat with reactions. And I have no father's property. I may enjoy this life. But what about my next life? And also, one more thing he says, Dukhaushadam. He says the medicines in this world sometimes do more harm than the problem itself. Dukhaushadam tadapi dukham. I have seen Prahlad Maharaj is saying 
the medicines in this world sometimes do more damage than the problem themselves. Vaidya Raja Namastubhyam Yamaraja Sahodara Yamatu Harati Pranan Tutva Pranan Dhanani Cha. The Sanskrit poets, they write, oh, doctors. I hope Adi Gadadar Prabhu doesn't listen to this verse. But anyway, <laughs> it is Vaidya Raja Namastubhyam. Oh, doctor, I bow down to you. Yamaraja Sahodara, you seem to be the brother of Yamaraj. Why? Yamatu Harati Pranan. Yamaraj comes and he takes away life. But you're a very interesting Yamaraj. Tutwa Pranan Dhanani Cha. You first start off with the money. You take all the money away, then you take the life. So you were very closely connected to uh, closely connected to Yamaraj. Again, this is not a blanket statement. It's just a sarcastic poetry in the Sanskrit language. So here, Prahlad Maharaj is saying, sometimes the patients experience that the medicines and the doctors are more scary or more troublesome than the trouble themselves. So similarly, all this material opulence seems to be like a medicine, but it'll cause more harm to me because I'll depend on it and I'll forget you. What's my destination going to be with material attachment? So Narsingha Dev says, then you please tell me, what do you want? He says, Tava Dasya Yogam, just accept me. Give me some service. Let me be your servant lifetime after lifetime. Let me be your servant lifetime after lifetime. So at that point, Narsingha Dev asked Prahlad Maharaj, are you sure this is what you want? Why me? What are you going to get being at my feet? What is my, uh, what do you think I am to you? What is my position in your heart? To that, Prahlad Maharaj says, Soham priyasya surida paradevataya Leela kathastavan rasimha virinchi gita Anjast Two verses he chants. He says, What you are to me? Oh, you're Surida. You're my ever well-wishing friend, lifetime after lifetime. When everybody was torturing me, throwing me from the cliff, you were the one protecting me. When they were stabbing me with weapons, you were the one protecting me. When they were tossing me into fire, you were the one protecting me. When they were administering poison into my mouth, you were the one protecting me, my Lord. When they were throwing me in the pit of hungry, venomous snakes, you were the one protecting me. When I was being thrown at the feet of the stampede of maddened elephants, you were the one protecting me. And you're asking me who you are to me? Or you are my ever well-wishing friend. And therefore, I want to sing only about you. Leela Kathastavandra Simha. I just want to sing about you. Virinchi Gita. Even Brahma. My guru is Narada Muni. His guru is Brahma. My Param Guru Dev also sings your glories. So just by singing about you and Hamsa Sangha, by associating with your pure Vaishnavas, I will cross over this world. I have no problem. But I have no other shelter apart from you. I will cross this world and come to you. I, I have no other shelter. Balasyaneha Sharanam Pitaro Narsimha. He gives three examples. He says, parents seem to be protecting the child. Doctors seem to be protecting the patient. The boat seems to be protecting a drowning man. But all three of them can do only when you empower. The parents, many times, it's so unfortunate. They are Rakshak, but they themselves become Bhakshak. Many times, very unfortunate, very calm. It's even contro- considered controversial to speak about. Many times parents themselves, they abort the child and they're taking medicines to kill the baby and they're trying their best to murder the child. And interestingly, the child still appears. Who is the one protecting the child at that point when the only connection in the whole creation at that point are the parents, biological parents? And they themselves want to murder the child. And the child appears. Who is the one protecting? It's Narsingha Dev. Similarly, one time my Guru Maharaj, he took one devotee to the, to the doctor because the devotee accidentally, um, you know, I think um, ate something which caused um, food poisoning and he was vomiting and he, he was rushed to the doctor by my Guru Maharaj. So when my Guru Maharaj took him there, took the devotee there, <laughs> 
the doctor uh, tried to you know uh, press his stomach and give him some medicines and made him vomit and did so many things and finally the doctor chuckled and told shila guru maharaj looking at the patient all you hare krishna people how much ever you chant ultimately you take shelter of a doctor only at the time of difficulty you know you can chant hare krishna as much as you want he told guru maharaj but when you also need help your krishna is not there you have to come to a doctor so shila guru maharaj with a bead bag in his hand he said we never took shelter of you we never take shelter of you and we will never take shelter of you past present and future we only take shelter of krishna the doctor was bewildered doctor said then why did you bring me here guru maharaj said because krishna instructed me to that's why he inspired me to come to you that's why otherwise i wouldn't have so this went a bouncer for the doctor he didn't understand he was like teaching chaitanya charitamrit to someone who has not done you know journey of self discovery course so <laughs> so so the doctor said but uh, you know you can't deny that uh, i get the credit for for doing what i'm doing here for saving his life so guru maharaj said you want to take credit for saving his life the doctor said of course because your krishna didn't come into the clinic and do it i was the one doing it so guru maharaj said okay do people die in this hospital or in this clinic the doctor said you know it's the law of life it happens so there are people who have died in my clinic or in my hospital also so guru maharaj said what medicine do you give them so that they die what medicine do you give them so the doctor said well i don't give any medicine it's just you know their karma their fate they die so guru maharaj said don't you think this is unfair that when they die you give the credit to karma and when they are saved you take the credit <laughs> he said you're simply an instrument just like you don't kill anybody you can save anybody it's the supreme lord who saves he is the one who inspires you what to do he is the instruments after all and he is the one in the body of the patient who's recovering the patient so here same thing prahlad maharaj is saying parents can try their best but it's the supreme lord who's the protector doctor can try his best but it's the supreme lord who protects the patient the boat can be as sturdy as possible shila guru maharaj in this context uh, of his narration very beautifully gives the example of the titanic said who would have thought that would sink right and people made millions out of the movie that came out of the sinking anyway so that is para dukha sukhi <laughs> somebody is drowning but that's fine i will drown in the money in their drowning story anyway so guru maharaj was explaining the best engineering boat and the best engineered ship drowns if it's not protected by the supreme lord so prahlad maharaj is saying that that ultimately it's you alone who can protect and if you let go we have no shelter so therefore i want and then he speaks so much about how the lord creates jeevas and this world and maya shakti and ultimately the living entities have no other shelter apart from krishna narsingadev says uh, well you're saying all that but i'm pretty sure you're missing out on some nectar that is there in this world you know yes i am the shelter and you want to serve me but don't you want to enjoy this world a little bit and then you know like dharma artha kama moksha you you enjoy a little bit of this world and then you come to me hmm? so prahlad maharaj says enjoy this world what kind of enjoyment kutra ashisha shruti sukha mrga trishni roopa kuedam kale varam ashesha rujam viroha निर्विध्यते न तु जनो यदपीति विद्वान कामानलम मधुलवै शमयन दुरापै ही सेज यू यू आर सेइंग टू एन्जॉय दिस वर्ल्ड कुत्र आशीष व्हाट काइंड ऑफ बून इज दैट श्रुति सुखा मृग तृष्णी रूपा द जॉय ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड माय लॉर्ड मृग तृष्णी रूपा इज अ मिराज इट्स अ मिराज that animals go through in the desert this world is a desert with no water called joy and you want me as an animal to run behind the mirage he says shruti sukha very beautiful term kutra shisho shruti sukha shruti means hearing and sukha means joy there is joy in this world only in the hearing which means not the hearing process of bhakti sirf sunne mein sukh hai bas 
लड्डू खा लो तो सुख है ये कर लो तो सुख है बस ये सुनने में आनंद आता है करने में कोई आनंद नहीं है विच मीन्स जस्ट बाई हियरिंग द प्लानिंग ऑफ सेंस एंजॉयमेंट देर इज प्लेजर बट इन दैट एक्चुअल इवेंट देर इज नो जॉय लाइक वेन यू हियर रियली यू आर गोइंग टू इंडिया यू आर गोइंग टू बी इन इंडिया फॉर वन मंथ सो जस्ट बाई हियरिंग दैट देर इज जॉय बट वेन द पर्सन टेक्स द फ्लाइट एंड लैंड एंड गोज देयर इट्स बीन टू वीक्स नाउ फेर इज द जॉय देर वॉज मोर जॉय इन हियरिंग अबाउट इट देर एक्चुअली एक्सपीरियंसिंग इट सो कुशिश श्रुति सुखान मृग तृष्णी रूपा He says the joy of this world is like trying to find water in the mirage of this desert, and there is joy only by hearing about the plan. But in the actual plan, there is no joy. Pralad Maharaj says, "How can there be joy obtained in the body which is full of distress? Like, for example, if we think about how many ways this finger can give us joy, you can maybe type something with it. You can maybe play the harmonium with it, or maybe you can decorate Krishna with it. Very little." pleasure that can come out of this finger but if you think in how many ways this finger can give us distress or oh, there are so many ways it can be burnt it can be cut in so many ways it can be broken <laughs> so the number of ways in which this finger can give us suffering is way more than the number of ways in which it can give us joy and that's just the finger one finger now imagine the hand imagine the arm and imagine the whole body sharira avidhya jal the pleasure that the body can get is insignificant compared to the distress that it can get so pralad maharaj says there is no joy outside and even if there is joy the receptive ability of the body is insignificant and not just me even the great scholars know this nirvidyate natu jano yad apiti vidwan even the vidwan the great scholars i am just a child somebody can say what do you know you are only 5 years old Well, he says. Even the scholars say this, and they say that kaman alam madhu lavai shamayan durapai. Getting joy in this world is like trying to get a drop of honey from a honeycomb. His Holiness Bhanu Maharaj very beautifully describes in his con that if you want the honey of the honeycomb of this world, get ready for the bee stings. <laughs> How beautiful! I'll repeat that. if we want the honey drop from the honeycomb of this world we better be ready for the bee stings right the the stinging of the bee is way more scary <laughs> than the honey drop so you better just leave it right better just leave it so he says detachment my lord from this world is the only truth i don't want anything else so the shingadev says you sure you don't want any attachment he says no no i want one attachment what is that attachment tasmad amus tanubhritam aham ashishotnya ayu shriyam vibhavam indriyam avirinchat nechamite vilulitan uruvikramena kalat mano panaya mam nija bhritya parashwam the only attachment i want in this world is service to my guru maharaj nija bhritya parashwam that narad muni because of whom i am seeing you may i be attached to him <laughs> may i get your lotus feet by attachment to him i don't want anything else and then he says very famous verse which prabhupada also quotes many times evam janam nipatitam prabhavahi kupe kama bhi kama manu yah prapatan prasangat kritvatma sat sura rishina bhagavan grihita सोहम कथम नु विसृजे तव भृत्य सेवाम जनम निपतित प्रभवा ही कूपे प्रलाद महाराज से आई वॉज फॉलोन इन द वूम ऑफ माई मदर विच इज लाइक अ वेल ऑफ द स्नेक ऑफ अटैचमेंट रिपीटेड बर्स एंड डेथ बट माई गुरु महाराज सो काइंडली ही स्टूड आउटसाइड द वेल एंड ही स्पोक कृष्ण कथा टू मी हाउ हाउ ग्रेटफुल is pralad maharaj you see pralad maharaj did not have the pranam mantra of his guru maharaj he didn't have a picture of his guru maharaj pralad maharaj had never seen his guru maharaj he is sitting in the womb of his mother and hearing hari katha we have our guru maharaj we have his uh, pranam mantra we have his kirtans we have his classes we have his um, mood his disciples his projects we have so much more his books and of course prabhupada and everyone we have everyone all the acharyas 
and how little we are able to do for them. And here is Prahlad Maharaj saying, I was in the womb of my mother, which is like a well of the snake of repeated birth and death. Punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani, jathare shayanam, ihasam sare, bahudustare, kripaya apare, pahi murare. I was fallen. But my Guru Maharaj stood outside that well and spoke Krishna Katha till the time I came out. <laughs> Narad Muni spoke. He says, I was, if, I, if, uh, if Narad Muni wouldn't have spoken that, I would have been just like my father, chasing sense gratificatory desires. My Lord, after getting you through his mercy, how can I give up on his service? Soham katham nu visrije tava bhritya sevam. Narad Muni became the ladder through whose mercy I climbed up and got the fruit. That is your darshan. Now, after getting the fruit, how can I kick the ladder? I want this ladder lifetime after lifetime. I just want to serve your lotus feet by serving his lotus feet. You see, Guru Tattva, Maya Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, everything is included in these prayers. Narsingadev says, don't you want to serve me directly? Why do you want to serve my devotee? <laughs> One time you're saying you want to be my servant and then you're saying you want to serve me by serving my servant. Why, why not me directly? To that, Prahlad Maharaj says, Itham nitirya grishi deva jashavatarai Lokan vibhavaya sihamsi jagat pratipan Dharmam maha purushapasi yuganu vrittam Channa kalo yadabhavas triyugota sattvam my Lord, you have come so many times. You appear so many times. Itham nri tirya grishi deva jasha avataraihi. Sometimes as a human, sometimes as an animal, sometimes as a rishi. See, you take human incarnation, human-like incarnations in the form of Rama and Krishna. Animal-like incarnations in the form of Matsya Kurma Varaha. And rishi-like incarnations in the form of Parishuram. And deva sometimes like a demigod in the form of Vamandev. And Jasha, aquatics, you take so many incarnations. You come so many times. Lokan vibhava yasi hamsi jagat pratipan dharmam maha purushapasi. You come for paritrana sadhunam minasha chidushkritam dharma samstha panartha. You come. But somehow, although you come again and again to give nectar, I am not able to take advantage because I am fallen. When I was in my mother's womb, your servant came and spoke. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> you take so many incarnations, but I'm still taking births. My Lord, you take incarnations and I'm taking births. I am also taking incarnations. But when your servant came, my desire to take births stopped. More man prabhu as vishwasa, ram te adhik ram karadasa. Bhaktai bhakta janapriyam. Greater than the Supreme Lord. Is his servant. We want to contemplate on this point. Paramatma is always there with us. Does that make us liberated? We were animals. We were sometimes pigs and sometimes dogs and sometimes monkey bodies and sometimes tree bodies and Paramatma is there, but nothing happens. He's not able to liberate me. The giver of mukti is there next to me, but he's not like, you know, two birds in the same branch. But what's the point? The other bird is not speaking, not even looking at me. And I continue to eat the fruit. But when the servant in the form of Gurudev comes, oh, that's it. That's it. Now we're winding up in this material world. Another classic example. Mother Sita was, uh, you know, separated from Sri Ram. Ram is all powerful. But what happened? Her suffering continued. It took a Hanuman to cross the ocean to give the ring to Mother Sita in the Ashokvatika of Ravana's kingdom. So Maya's kingdom is Ashokvatika. We are in the position of Mother Sita, separated from Sri Ram. But it takes a Hanuman in the form of Gurudev to cross the ocean on the Jaladuta, like Prabhupada, cross the ocean and come and set the whole Lanka of material existence on fire with his tail, giving us the ring of Sri Ram in the form of the holy name. And then Sri Ram builds the bridge and comes and saves Mother Sita. So who's greater, Hanuman or Sri Ram? Sri Ram is always there, but it was Hanuman who saved Mother Sita. Okay, okay, it is Sri yeah. Guru who saves the conditioned soul, although the Paramatma is always there. So here Prahlad Maharaj is saying, you take so many incarnations, but it took a Narad Muni to uplift my consciousness. 
you take so many incarnations i am very fallen my lord naitan manastava kathasu vikunthanath i have no taste in hearing about you who sing prahlad maharaj is saying now his humility is rising <laughs> on the ocean of his heart so many waves are rising sampriyate durita dushtam asadu tivram he says i am sinful i am polluted i am an asura asadhu and kamaturam i am filled with lust and duality and harsha shoka fear and lamentation and hankering and um, pleasure in money <laughs> things that pralad maharaj has no clue about he's speaking here <laughs> in humility that i am attached to all these things or maybe another way to say is you know pralad maharaj would have understood this this fallen amarendra das he you know he he will not offer prayers so let me just offer it on his behalf and tell this rascal you just repeat after me you know <laughs> just like the parents they don't have to do a b c d they know it but they just say it so that the child repeats after them and learns it so pralad maharaj he doesn't get attracted to all these things but he's just doing it so that we repeat this and we offer the right prayers he's saying tasmin katham tava gatim vimrshami dinah how can a fallen person like me think about you my senses are all over the place jivaikato chuta vikarshati ma vitripta my tongue is taking me in one direction shishnonyatas my genital is dragging me in another direction twag udharam shravanam kutashchit my skin my belly my ear are all dragging me in different directions granonyatas my nose is dragging me in another direction chapala drik my eyes are taking me in another direction and karma shakti i am working in another dis- direction prahlad maharaj is saying my consciousness is bifurcated and multi branched in this world how can i think about you but still greater than my own concern i am worried about others at least i know the path i may not be following he is saying but i know the path of devotion but others don't even know that and, Pral- and our prabhupad used to quote this verse which is coming up in the mood of compassion naivo dvijay para duratyaya vaitaranyas tvat virya gayana mahamrata magna chitta shoche tato vimukha chetasa indriyartha maya sukhaya bharam udvahavanti mudha or mudhan prahlad maharaj says yes i am not qualified i am fallen i am contaminated but i know the path to get you is to sing your glories and i will do that but my main concern is for shoche my main shok my main trouble my main compassionate heart is beating for vimukha chetasa those who don't like you indriyartha maya sukhaya and for temporary pleasure they are running in this world bharam they are carrying the burden of family life vimudan these fools i am not saying it pralat <laughs> maharaj is saying it <laughs> so he's saying i'm i am really troubled by them how will they cross there are people who don't preach in this world prayana deva munaya swa vimukti kama they are just thinking of their own um, upliftment and maunam charanti they are keeping mauna living in the forest vijane na parartha nishta they don't think about others but i am not like that na etan vihaya kripanan vimumukso eka i cannot come back to you leaving all of them behind i can get liberated leaving these fools behind nanyam tvadasya sharanam bhramato nupashye they are all blind my lord they don't see you as their only shelter and they're trying to scratch their skin for some pleasure it's like those who are homeless they're hungry and thirsty they're looking for food in a trash can i feel bad for them i can't eat i can honor prasadam when i see that they're struggling to find food i feel like giving i feel like giving it to them they're all searching for joy people in this world are searching for you but they don't have you they're blind i have you just that i have to i am i'm not qualified i just have to start singing about you but they don't even know you and my heart goes to them so nishingadev says why do you call them blind in the example of the homeless trying to find for food in a trash can what are they trying to do where are they trying to find joy why do you think why why are you saying that they're all blind to that the very famous words canto 7 chapter 9 text 45 again one of prabhupad's favorites 
Prahlad Maharaj says, Yan maithuna di grihame di sukham hi tucham, Kandu yane na karayor iva dukha dukham, Tripyanti neha kripana bahu dukha bhaja, Kandu tivan manasijam vishaheta dhira. What can I tell you, my Lord? The biggest source of joy that people are finding in this world is sex pleasure. Yen maithunadi grihamedi sukham hi tucham. He says, Prahlad Maharaj says, this is disgusting pleasure. Disgusting. It's like, kandu yenena karayor iva dukha dukham. Just by trying to relieve an itch by scratching, you get some pleasure, but then you scratch more and then you get a little more pleasure. You scratch more and then it gets worse and then there's blood. And there's more dukkha after that. The consciousness gets covered and contaminated through sexual activity and involvement. And our cycle of birth and death continues. This is not the pleasure that we are looking for. Prahlad Maharaj says, Tripyanti neha kripana bahu dukkha bhaja. The lusty fool is thinking he is enjoying like a camel who's chewing on the thorns and cutting his own tongue and bleeding and tasting that blood and thinking that's the taste coming from the thorn. How are they all going to get you? My heart is bleeding. So Nushingadev says, okay, I see your point. So if you have to give them a solution, what would you give? Now you're speaking to me. It's being recorded. Everyone's hearing. Tell me six things that they can do to take shelter of my lotus feet. And at that point, Prahlad Maharaj very beautifully gives six steps by which we can take shelter of Krishna. This is the conclusion of Prahlad's prayers. Dear devotees, please note the six things that we can do. Prahlad Maharaj says that ensures taking shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. Tatter hattama namas tuti karma puja karma smritis charana yor shravanam kathayam sam sevaya tvai vineti shadangaya kim bhaktim jana paramaham sagato laveta. He says the six things that we should do on a daily basis to take shelter of the Lord is tuti, is to glorify the Lord. Karma puja to work for the Lord and dedicate our activities to Him. Three, Smriti, to remember Him. Remember the Supreme Lord's lotus feet. Fourth, serve His devotees. Five, Shravanam Kathayam, to to, uh, hear about the Supreme Lord. And finally, to worship Him in the form of the deity. To glorify the Lord, to dedicate our daily activities for Him, to serve the Vaishnavas, to remember the Lord, to worship his deity and hear and chant about him. These are the six things. All of them are included. Glorifying means preaching, kirtan, japa. Dedicating our activities means keeping our business or our daily work as ethical as possible and donating and offering it to Krishna. Serving the Vaishnavas, worshipping the deity, remembering Krishna out of gratitude and hearing about him, chanting about him. By doing these six, Prahlad Maharaj said, anybody and everybody can get what I have received, which is darshan of your lotus feet. (laughs) When Prahlad Maharaj ends his prayers at this point, Narsingadev says, I am so happy. I was um, biting my lips in anger only so that the world could hear your prayers. These prayers have glorification of the Lord. They have purification of the heart. They have the ugly, raw face of this material world. And the words of a surrendered devotee. Prahlad, ask for a benediction and I will give you. Ask for whatever you want and I will give you. Ayushman, he says. <laughs> Maam, apranita, Ayushman. Darshanam durlabham hi me. Now Shingadev says, that darshan of mine, which is durlabha, even for the demigods that you have got. Now I give you long life. Ask for a benediction that you want. Prahlad Maharaj says, I am not a businessman. What kind, of, what kind of blessing are you asking for? What kind of boon are you asking for? As if I offered these prayers and at the end, now you want to give me remuneration? Am I a businessman who's investing his faith in something and gets returns out of it? No, no, come on. You, know, you can trick me by all that. Maybe you can trick others, but not your devotees. We are your selfless servants. We just want your pleasure. We just want your smiling face. I don't want anything. Narshingadev says, no, no, there must be some reciprocation. I want to give you something. My name is Vardaraj, the giver of boons. Ask for something. 
Prahlad Maharaj says, then just purify my father, uplift him. Now Shingadev says, 21 generations are uplifted when a devotee like you are born. So you don't worry, he's already purified. Prahlad Maharaj says, then if my father is purified, then I ask for a boon, you purify my heart. <laughs> Take all material desires away. Now Shingadev says, what a joke is that? Your heart is pure as gold. In fact, gold gets purified by being compared to your heart. There's no material desire. Ask for something else. Prahlad Maharaj says, will you fulfill if I ask you something? Yes, yes, go for it. Give me the boon that may I never ask you anything. Give me the spoon. May I serve you because I want to serve you out of love. May I not ask anything in return? I don't want anything from you, my Lord. You're not an ATM machine that I put my card and get my cash out. <laughs> you give me the boon that I may I never ask you for anything. Yadi dasya si me kaman varam stam varadarshaba kamanam ridi asamroham bhavatastu brini varam. This is the verse that we all should memorize that, my Lord, please purify my heart in such a way that may I never ask you anything. Narsingadev, he says, I am defeated. I will give you this benediction that may you never ask anything. But apart from that, I'll give one more benediction that anyone who chants these prayers, they will all be freed from all material reactions. And even their hearts, I bless them. They will never be able to ask anything material to me. I will give them eternal protection. And lifetime after lifetime, they will be at my lotus suite. This is the benediction for those who chant these prayers. And in this way, the instructions of Prahlad Maharaj in the sixth chapter to his classmates gets completely coupled by the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj to the spiritual, uh, the, the spiritual master and the Supreme Lord Nashingadev in the ninth chapter. It's so fascinating that the test of the pudding is in tasting it. So the test of Prahlad Maharaj's instructions and his devotion is the fruit that he received, the direct manifestation of the Lord's mercy. So as we are gearing up for Nashinga Chaturdashi, may we pray that breaking the pillar, the stamba of our pride in the assembly of our heart, may Nashinga Dev appear to destroy the Hiranyakashipu of our anarthas and lovingly place his palms on the little small pralad of devotion who's rising in the Hiranyakashipu family of our heart. And all of this is possible because there is a Narada Muni called the Guru Parampara who is taking care of us. Thank you so much. Please forgive me for going over time. Vancha Kalpatru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyaya Vacha Patitanam Bhavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namun Maha Bhakta Shiromani Shri Prahlad Maharaj Ki Jai Vikna Vinash Nashingadev Ki Jai Prantraj Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Patita Pavan Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaudiya Guru Varga Ki Jai 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 Sri Radhe Shyam